Ladies and gentlemen, tech enthusiasts and brand loyalists, welcome to the ultimate showdown in the world of smartphones and innovation. In one corner, we have the titan of sleek design and revolutionary technology, the company that redefined the smartphone Apple. Known for its cutting edge devices, iconic branding, and a loyal fan base, Apple has set the gold standard for modern tech. And in the other corner, we have the global powerhouse that's pushing the boundaries of innovation, the challenger that's not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. Samsung, with its bold designs, feature-packed devices, and a relentless drive to outdo the competition, Samsung has proven time and again that it's a force to be reckoned with. Today, we pit these two giants against each other in a clash of titans, comparing their latest innovations, strategies, an impact on the tech world. It's Apple versus Samsung in a battle for dominance that will have tech fans on the edge of their seats. Who will come out on top? Stay tuned, because this is one tech face-off you don't want to miss. Looking for a podcast that hits all the right notes? Welcome to the Melody Podcast, where every episode is a symphony of stories, melodies, and memories. From the timeless tunes of Frank Sinatra to the groundbreaking sounds that shaped generations. The Melody Podcast takes you on a journey through the music that moves us. Every week, we dive into the life and legacy of the legends who define music history. We uncover the stories behind the song, the passion behind the performances, and the magic that turned mere notes into timeless classics. Whether you're a music aficionado, a history buff, or just love a good story, the Melody Podcast is your backstage pass to the greatest show on earth, the music that shaped our world. Subscribe now and let the melody carry you away. The Melody Podcast, where music tells its story. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Tune in and let the music play. Welcome to the Corporate Clash. Today we're talking about Apple versus Samsung. It's the business battle of the tech giants. So Apple Inc. was founded on April 1st, 1976 by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne in Copentino, California. So the Apple company started with a vision to create and sell personal computers. The founders, a visionary entrepreneur, Steve Jobs was responsible for the overall direction and marketing of Apple. He had a strong belief in making technology accessible and user-friendly for the masses. Steve Wozniak, he was an an electronics engineer and computer programmer. Wozniak was the techni technical genius behind the first Apple computers. He designed the Apple I and Apple II, the latter of which became one of the first successful mass-produced personal computers. Ronald Wayne, a lesser-known co-founder, Wayne was initially involved in the administrative and documentation side of the business. He left the company just 12 days after its founding, selling his 10% stake for $800. A decision that is often regarded as one of the most significant missed opportunities in tech history. In the early days, Apple famously started in the garage of Steve, Steve Jobs in his childhood home in Los Altos, California. Jobs and Wozniak worked together to build the Apple I, a personal computer that was sold as a fully assembled circuit board. Although it lacked a keyboard monitor and, monitor and casing, it was an important step towards the personal computer revolution. The Apple I was introduced in 1976 and sold for $666.66. A price Wozniak chose because he liked repeating digits. It was initially sold to local computer hobbyists and was a moderate success, allowing the company to fund the development of its ne next project. The Apple II Launched in 1977, the Apple II was the first product to bring Apple mainstream success. Unlike the Apple I, the Apple II came as a fully assembled computer with a keyboard and color graphics, which was a significant advancement at its time. It became one of the most successful early personal computers and solidified Apple's position in the emerging tech industry. Steve Jobs reportedly chose the name Apple because he wanted something simple, fun, and non-threatening. 
The story goes that Jobs, a fruitarian at the time, was inspired after visiting a apple orchard. He thought the name sounded fun, spirited, and not intimidating. Additionally, the name placed Apple ahead of Atari in the phone book, which was Jobs' former employer and a major player in the tech industry at the time. After the success of the Apple II, the company attracted the attention of investors, leading to its incorporation in 1977 and its first major influsion of capital from venture capitalist Mike Markula. Markula's investment and business expertise helped Apple grow rapidly, leading to the company's initial public offering, the IPO, in 1980, which made several em- several early employees millionaires overnight. Samsung's origin story is quite different from that of Apple, as it started as a trading company before it became a global re- leader in electronics. Samsung started as a small trading company founded by Li Buyong Cha in 1938. The company began with just 40 employees and dealt primarily in dried fish, locally grown groceries, and noodles. The name Samsung means three stars in Korean, symbolizing something big, powerful, and everlasting. In its early years, Samsung focused on exporting goods from Korea to China and its surrounding regions. The company's trading business was relatively successful and it allowed Li to expand into other areas. After the Korean War, Li moved the company to Suhoi in 1947, and the, Sam- and the Samsung started diversifying its operations. During the 1950s, Samsung ventured into various industries, including food processing. Samsung established the Samsung Sangho Company, which processed and refined sugar. Textiles. The company opened the largest woolen mill in Korea, expanding its presence into the textile industry. Insurance and retail. Samsung entered into the insurance insurance business and also ventured into retail, setting the stage for future growth. Entry into electronics. So Samsung entered entered into the electronics industry in the late 1960s, marking the beginning of its transformation into the tech giant we know today. Founded in 1969, Samsung Electronics initially produced black and white televisions. The company quickly expanded into other electronic sectors, including home appliances like washing machines, refrigerators, and air conditioners. By the late 1970s, Samsung started investing into semiconductors, which would become more of one of its core businesses. This move was crucial as semiconductors would later fuel the company's growth in the global electronics market. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Samsung continued to expand its electronic business, focusing on technology innovation and global expansion. Samsung faced challenges along the way, including the 1997 Asian financial crisis and leadership transitions within the company. Li passed away in 1987, and his son, Li Kun-hee, took over as chairman. Under Li Kun-hee's leadership, Samsung adapted a new management strategy focused on quality and innovation, famously declaring that Samsung should change everything except your wife and children. This shift in focus helped Samsung become a global brand known for high-quality electronics and innovation, particularly in smartphones, televisions, and semiconductors. The question of who leads in innovation between Apple and Samsung depends on how one defines and measures innovation. Both companies are considered leaders in their respective areas and each have strengths in different aspects of innovation. Apple focuses its strategy around creating premium, high-quality devices that emphasize design, user experience, and ecosystem integration. The iPhone is Apple's flagship product, and each new release is typically accompanied by significant media attention and consumer 
anticipation. Apple differentiates itself through its priority operating system, iOS, which is known for its seamless integration with other Apple products, Mac, iPad, Apple Watch, and a strong emphasis on privacy and security. Apple's ecosystem is a major weapon in its competition with Samsung by ensuring that its products work best when used together, like the iPhone, the Apple Watch, and the AirPods. Apple encourages its customers to stay within the ecosystem, making it harder for them to switch to competitors like Samsung. Samsung bought, battles Apple by offering a wider range of products across various price points. While Apple focuses on premium segment, Samsung competes in the, in the budget mid-range and premium segments. Samsung's Galaxy S and Note series compete directly with the iPhone, while the Galaxy A and M series target budget-friendly con consumers. Samsung pushes the boundaries of smartphone design, especially with its foldable devices like the Galaxy Z Fold and the Z Flip. These innovations allow Samsung to offer unique products that Apple has not ventured into, appealing to tech enthusiasts and early adopters. Apple's marketing emphasizes product as premium, aspirational items. The brand has a loyal customer base, and Apple capitalizes on this through its cult-like following. Apple's advertisements often focus on the elegance and simplicity of its products, as well as the unique features of its ecosystem. Apple's product launch events are highly anticipated and covered extensively by the media. These events help make, make Apple maintain its image as a leader in innovation and keep its brand in the spotlight. Samsung targets a broader demographic with its advertising, often highlighting features that demonstrate the differentiate, the differentiate its products from Apple. For example, Sam, for example, Samsung's ads frequently emphasize its superior hardware such as display quality, battery life, and innovative features like the style of support and foldable screens. Samsung has been known to directly compare its products to Apple's in the marketing campaigns, highlighting areas where it believes its, product, its products outperform the iPhone. This comparative approach often appeals to consumers who are looking for alternatives to Apple. Apple and Samsung have been involved in numerous legal battles over patents. Particularly in the early 2010s, Apple accused Samsung of copying the iPhone's design and user interface, leading to high-profile lawsuits in multiple countries. While some cases were settled, others resulted in substan substantial fines and rulings that affected both companies' strategies. These legal battles not only cost both companies financially, but also shape the way they design and innovate their products. For example, Samsung made efforts to differentiate its product designs following these lawsuits. The battle is still ongoing, but if we had to declare a winner today, who would we say the winner is? I'm an Apple user myself, much by peer pressure of the blue bubbles, but come on iPhones are the same thing every year. They just update the graphics and they update the processors and maybe add a new camera on there so we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cameras on the back of our phones or camera lenses. But there's no new features that come out. Apple used to be above the innovation, but with phones like Google's Pixel 9, you can draw and circle items and find them online. Or you can use its AI, the Gemini, and you can take pictures of plants and, and ask the Gemini what kind of plant that is, just from your phone. Now, ask Siri that, and she's going to tell you she doesn't understand what you're asking. I don't know, but if we had to declare a winner today, I would say the winner of this battle is... Samsung. Because... They have done it all, from textile to insurance and eventually becoming the tech giant. They used history to build a brand. I mean, what could be next for Samsung? If they went through everything from insurance to textile to food processing and eventually 
diving into the electronics of the world, and they built semiconductors. What could be next for Samsung? Robots? AI robots? I mean, that seems like the next thing on the list. I mean, AI has become so powerful in the 2020s. So that could be next for them. We shall wait and see. But maybe it's time to let your Apple iPhone go and switch to a Samsung. I'm... That, this is not a brand promotion. I'm just saying. Maybe it's time. The quote of the week is, Success in business isn't about winning every, bot- every battle. Let me say that again. Success in business isn't about winning every battle, but about staying in the fight long enough to win the war. Thanks for tuning in to The Corporate Clash as we clash businesses to find who prevails above the other. I hope you find it interesting, and if so, share it with your friends, family, and co-workers. Also, please consider subscribing and following us on social media. If you have a brand that you'd like us to clash, please either comment on this podcast, comment on YouTube, or find us on Facebook, The Corporate Clash, and let us know. We want to we find brands that want to battle each other, so let us know. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for listening.